MSG, the setting, so you know it was a show. Game of the tournament thus far. Taking a look at the final seconds. Michigan State down by three. Needing a look. Can't get it. The man that was the giver all game long. This time, the taker. Marquise Noel with a steal and a bucket. And that's your ball game. The Kansas State Wildcats feeling elite as they come away with a win in the Sweet 16. Taking a look at that box score, your final here, 98 to 93. And the story is that young man, Marquise Noel, Harlem born on this stage, dealing with an ankle in the second half, sets a tournament record with 19 assists, adds 20 points to boot the small man playing big on the biggest stage possible as K-State plays on. Down goes Sparty. Your post-game breakdown is presented by Belfort, restoring more than property alongside Tim Doyle and the coach Avery Johnson. I'm your host, Joe Musso. Guys, if I may, wow. I mean, that was some good hoop, TD. The best we've seen in this tournament. These two teams shoot at 52% combined from the field. We sat here and watched it together. Your big takeaway in this moment is what? Well, I think the star of the game and the star of the tournament this so far delivered on the biggest stage. I mean, it had all the drama. We expected Tom Izzo to have a game plan to slow down Marquise Noel. He did from a scoring aspect in the first half, only five points, but he went out there, he had 10 dimes, and then he made every key play down the stretch. I think that he only grew up only a few, a few blocks away from the world's most famous arena, and then to deliver on mm. a stage like this, uh, remarkable. Game of the year in college basketball, but you love when big time players show up on big time moments, and he did it more than just scoring the basketball. Almost 20 assists, a wild performance, Joe. We've heard of companies before, and there's one company that's called Johnson & Johnson. Mm. So from Avery Johnson <laughs> to Keontae Johnson, I want to just tip my hat to this young man uh, that passed out on the court a couple of years ago with mm -hmm. Florida. Now he's back. That live play, which was a set play that Noel threw to him for the back was dunk, that could have been arguably the play of the game in that situation. That was such a high risk play. If that was a business, it would be called a venture capital type <laughs> of a play. It wasn't a low risk play, but uh, Keontae Johnson uh, and Noel was just both superstars on the biggest stage. I've hit a game winning shot before in the NBA for the San Antonio Spurs on that same court in Madison Square Garden. That's the mecca of basketball. I am so happy for Jerome Tang and his staff. They've done an amazing job in their first year of this program and they marches on and you can feel the love between his players and coach Jerome Tang. They absolutely love to play for this man. Now, coach, you mentioned Tang. TD, you mentioned Izzo. And a game like this, a box score like this, is only the product of elite preparation. Let's talk about these two head coaches. You touched upon it a little bit there, Coach, and I want to go to you because you obviously watch this differently, having stood in those shoes. What did you see in this coaching matchup tonight? I mean, we had a duel of timeouts there inside 30 seconds. It really was premier coaching at the highest level as well. Yeah, and I've been watching Jerome Tank for a long time when he was an assistant at uh, Baylor under Coach Scott Drew. They also had Grant McCaslam. Uh, I, all of those guys, I think Grant's going to end up getting the the Texas Tech job, another coach, you know, got 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 another head coaching job. But I believe that Jerome Tang, that underneath out of bounds play, where they had mm. 4.7 seconds left on the shot clock, he allowed Noel to take the ball out at one time before Coach Izzo maybe outthought himself. Noel was on the court. He called the timeout. Jerome Tang called the timeout, made the adjustment. The guy made the shot on the baseline. That's what I call fabulous coaching. Sure, the ball has to go in the basket, but it's just that it was a well-executed plan, and he got one of his players a wide-open shot. So that's where you talk about coaching. Some of the other things coaching may be overrated. It wasn't overrated in what we call a special teams situation, that if it was football, Offense, defense, special teams, special situations. Jerome Tang had his team well prepared. Yeah, both of these had men uh, uh, shining here on the whiteboard when their teams needed it most. That was one of 19 dimes, as we said here for Noel. TD, you grew up in the area. You know what that building means. You know what the moment means. 
For this young man to do what he just did, I think it deserves another moment of our own here because it was truly special, setting an NCAA tournament record in a place that you idolize, a place that you dream of playing. A lot of times when we get these sort of storylines, it doesn't live up to the moment, but he did in such a big way tonight. I mean, you, you literally can't dream of this. Like, what do you do for an encore? Like, walk <laughs> on water? You know, he came into this game. He single-handedly beat Kentucky with 27 points and nine assists. The previous game, he had 17 points, 14 assists, and a first-round win over Montana State. So it's like, all right, now you're playing on your home court, but it's Tom Izzo. He's got days to prepare. He's going to be able to shut you down. You know, when they kept panning to the crowd, you see two of the greatest point guards of college, Mateen Cleaves, and of the NBA mm -hmm. and Isaiah Thomas watching this performance. That's what was giving me goosebumps yeah. because you knew you were watching something special. Sure, he took three, not one, not two. But three logo threes that I was like, <laughs> right, maybe we can get a better shot than that. I would have preferred to see him turn the corner. But if you really want to get into nerd basketball one-on-one, -on -one, coach makes an amazing point. Because that timeout, Tang ended up having him take the ball out. And the thing that amazed me the most was the pass. You normally don't see a cross-court bounce Off pass. The bounce on the baseline. To Masood, who made some enormous shots. Yep. But that, that's a special play, and I, I think just another extension of a, a guard winning in March. This is what wins in March, everybody. You got great guards. You got guys that can make plays. <laughs> you got older guys. You got 50-year guys. That's what's going to win now in college basketball. Uh, that was an amazing point that coach made, and that was an amazing performance. What are you going to do for an on car? I can't wait to see. Yeah, I, I'm a, in agreement with T Tim Doyle in this situation. Even though I don't agree with Northwestern uh, undergrad guys as much, I love Kellogg uh, um, graduates like my daughter. But I, but again, I agree with Tim Doyle. And the main thing is, when you have a little maestro like that, good things can come in small packages. You gotta remember, <laughs> Norrell is only 5'8". Did you see the no-look passes, mm. the defense, the steals? He went out for a minute where we thought it was an ankle situation. They retaped his ankle, came back in. This guy was dominating amongst the trees. Uh, but but again, this team, the depth, the bench help that they receive, unlike, you know, where there's another game going on where Arkansas is getting annihilated by Connecticut. This is a well put together, well-constructed team, and you have to give their coaching staff with the vision that Jerome Tang had. I've, and I've had 21 assists in the game, but that was in the HBCU SWAC conference game. <laughs> I've never had 21 assists uh, in an NCAA tournament game. So his 19 assists was one of the most impressive performances I've ever seen on any level of basketball. 10 in the first half, 9 in the second half, 24 combined made threes by these teams, 16 lead changes. What an amazing game it was, Coach. But Tim already posed the question, what do you do for an encore? If you're trying to settle this team and you are Jerome Tang, get them ready for another massive moment in just about 48 hours, how, how do you recenter coming off an emotional uh, sigh of this? I mean, not a sigh, more of a celebration, but how do you come off of this sort of emotion and prepare for what's next? Well, you talk to your teams about the score is 0, zero. Whomever you're going to play in your next game, hey, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's get back to the fundamentals. Play to our strengths. Uh, we don't need to, you know, we, we, we don't need to reinvent ourselves at this stage of the game. Mm -hmm. If you're a shooter, shoot. If you're a pass, a pass. If you're a rebound, rebound. So I, I just think he's going to talk to them about not having an identity crisis at this stage of uh, the NCAA tournament, especially when you're in the Elite Eight with one more win to meet Tim and I in Houston. Yeah, I, I, I do have a little bit of a concern. And, and this is not a joke, and I love to play. But you got a kid that's got Harlem roots. You have a performance like this. You're in a city that doesn't sleep. I used to play my home games at Madison Square Garden while I was at St. John's. Back to the team hotel. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those that you have to, you remember Reggie Jackson in Naked Gun? You're like, I must get to the hotel. I must kill the queen. I must get to the hotel because you can start to wander there. You go outside the garden. There's a certain energy in New York City and there's a certain energy in these games and you could almost feel it through whatever device you were watching on. You could feel that energy there. So. 
I am a bit concerned because I know what I'd be doing. I'd be streaking, right, <laughs> through the quads, through 42nd Street. I would be enjoying myself because that was a performance of a lifetime. Really, the rest of his life is downhill because I don't think he could ever put together another game like that. And that's why it's best that we got Tim Doyle from St. John's up to Evanston just for, for everybody's <laughs> safety. I think that was the best it, thing possible. It, no, What's no, up, Coach? I think, Tim, I think Tim thinks that this is an NBA playoff series where you have seven games. No, this is single elimination. That young man's going to sleep. He's going to put a call on mute. He's going to sleep. Well, on the other side of this one, uh, Coach Izzo, Izzo said of his New York experience, he just wanted a slice of pizza and a cab ride from one of his star players. He's going to get that cab ride back to East Lansing because the season's all, uh, it's over at this point. And this was their best shooting performance, their best offensive performance of the tournament. A team that lived by the three, could have died by the three uh, two, two rounds ago. And they didn't. They made it to this moment. And then they have the best shooting game of their season possibly here uh, from three-point range, 13 to 25. I mean, from the field, 49%. You score 93 points and you're going home a five-point loser. How do you reconcile with this moment and that box score if you're in that Michigan State locker room right now, TD? You know, Coach has been there, and, and so have I. Like, you tell your kids to hold their heads up high. You know, you can nitpick. You know, Hauser had a wide-open three from the top of the key. He didn't bang it down. He missed an important free throw. You could nitpick all this stuff. You can nitpick that the second half spread was four for Kansas State <laughs> and Noel. There's no need to shoot that layup, buddy. He goes in, woo, scoops it in. If you had Kansas State in the second half like Coach did, you end up cashing that ticket. But, you know, whenever you're a coach, you ask for max effort. I, I thought Michigan State's effort was outstanding. Um, whenever you lose, you know, you always want to look back and be like, all right, did we do enough? I thought they did enough in this game. I don't know what more you could have done against Newell. It was a special performance. And when you get knocked out like that, you just go, you know, on this particular night, they were the better team. Well, my old friend, uh, Steve Smith, who I was on the round of 64 and 32 with, uh, along with Lisa Byington, he's not going to be happy. He was in <laughs> attendance in this game tonight for his Michigan State. He was writing Go Green on the Telestrator uh, during the first and second round. He's not going to be happy. And he's not going to be happy with their defense. At the end of the day, mm. you know, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships, and Michigan State didn't get enough stops. They didn't get enough stops down the stretch. And I want to give Jerome Tain credit for making all the necessary adjustments. That's when really coaching chess match comes into play. He made the right adjustments, substitutions, called the right plays, his players executed, but I just don't think Michigan State's defense was good enough to win this game, uh, especially um, in overtime. It was our first overtime game of the tournament, Sweet 16. We are off and running. What a start it was. TD, Coach, we appreciate you guys as always. And don't forget, for all your tourney needs, make sure to download the March Madness Live app. It's your team streaming in the palm of your hand, on your tablet, on your phone, on your laptop. Anywhere you stream, you can watch your team. Enjoy it with us. The March Madness Live app. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.